I am James Cook, commander of the British Royal Navy, a great explorer, navigator, and a talented cartographer. Seriously, what can go wrong? The natives will think you're a god. Yeah! Ah, that sounds pretty cool, right? Okay, fine. What's the catch? They'll cook you. Yeah! What the fuck? James Cook was born on the 7th of November 1728 from a working class family. He was 18 years old when he got his first job as an apprentice to a coal shipper. He spent several years sailing between London and the north of England, learning the laws of the sea and assimilating the techniques of controlling unruly crews. What's wrong, pal? I love the sea, but the English coast is not for me. I want real adventure, Henry. Do you understand? The ocean, the glory, everything. In 1755, Great Britain was rearming its fleet for the next war against France. The Crown was recruiting expert sailors to become part of the prestigious British Royal Navy. Why should we hire you? Because you need sailors and I'm volunteering. Tell me about your experience. Where did you sail? Between England and... And... Just England. But I promise you, I am a serious sailor. And the name of your ship is... Free Love. James was so skillful that he was appointed lieutenant of a cutter. A small ship with a mainmast and bowsprit suitable for quick raids and patrols. Naval duties brought him to Canada. He remained there even after the Seven Years' War ended, with the English triumph. Canada is now a colony of the British Crown. Cook stands out as an excellent officer, but above all, as a very skilled cartographer and astronomer. His maps of the Newfoundland Peninsula are perfect. They will be used until after the Second World War. 200 years later, on May 25, 1768, Cook was made lieutenant of a large ship. His Majesty has an assignment for you. You have to make a trip to the Pacific Ocean to observe the transit of Venus in front of the Sun that will happen next year in 1769. Wow, amazing! An exploration purely for scientific purposes. I couldn't be more proud to be yeah. British. Um, did I forget to mention that all the land that you will discover will be subjected to the British Crown? Also, you need to search for this continent. Transits of Venus provided astronomers a way to calculate the distance between the Earth and the Sun, also known as the astronomical unit. Transits of Venus are extremely rare. They come in pairs, eight years apart, separated by approximately 120 years, so if Cook and his men failed in their mission, the next opportunity would be after more than a century. Another purpose of the mission was to figure out if what was called the Terra Australis Incognita was real or just a legend. Its existence was not based on any survey or direct observation, but rather on the concept that the land in the Northern Hemisphere is probably balanced by land in the Southern Hemisphere. Cook will depart with the legendary HMB Endeavour. <coughs> At 2 p.m. got under sail and put to sea having on board 94 persons, Cook noted in his diary. Among these were John Gore, scholars from the Royal Society of London, the Swedish Daniel Solander and Joseph Banks, who became two of the most important naturalists in history. On January 13, 1769, the endeavor reached the extreme south of Patagonia during a terrible storm. Cape Horn is known as the end of the world, a place from which there is no return. Are we dying? Shut up, you coward. These waves are only 10 meters high. Once past Cape Horn, the Pacific presents itself to Cook's eyes in all its boundless calm. On the 3rd of June 1769, they observed the transit of Venus from Tahiti. After that, the ship headed towards Huahine, Bora Bora, and Raiatee, and finally New Zealand. On the 9th of October 1769, they landed on Poverty Bay. The Maori thought the endeavor was a strange floating island. We come in peace. We don't want trouble, my friends. You twat! Why'd you kill them? I just said we bring peace. Well, now he's in peace. You idiot! We're not here to kill them, okay? We're here to explore their land and natural resources. So we can steal from them. We're not stealing anything. How dare you speak ill of our great country? I hereby declare this land is now officially part of the UK in the name of our King George III. My friend, you probably don't know, but you're now a subject of the British Crown. On the 16th of January 1770, they arrived in the easternmost part of the New Zealand South Island, in a place Cook will call Queen Charlotte Sound. Captain, the view from here is amazing, and look at this strait between these two islands. You're right, my man. I have the perfect name for that. What name? My name. 
In fact, even nowadays the body of water that separates the North Island and the South Island of New Zealand is called Cook Strait. On the 10th of March 1770, the Endeavour passed the southern tip of the South Island, disproving the theory that New Zealand was part of the Terra Australis. The Endeavour went towards Tasmania but the winds forced them further north. They saw a long coast that seemed interminable. On April 29, 1770, the Endeavour located a perfect inlet to pull over. It was James Cook's first time to set foot in Australia. Banks and the naturalists were over the moon. They found animals and especially plants never seen before. So much so that Cook baptized the place Botanique Bay, now known as Botany Bay. However, determined to beat the monsoon winds, Cook and his crew stayed there for only eight days just to replenish the ship's supplies of wood, water and food. They had a brief contact with the natives, the aboriginals, as they were quite warlike. The Endeavour passed an inlet cook called Port Jackson, which later became a British prison colony in Australia. At present, it is the modern city of Sydney. On the 22nd of August 1770, the Endeavour reached the northernmost point of Australia. Cook climbed to the highest point of Possession Island. The land is ours. Yay! Cook claimed the east coast of Australia, calling it New South Wales. When the Endeavour set sail again, the mission was accomplished. They returned home sailing to the East Indies, the Cape of Good Hope, the Atlantic, and finally, England. Yay! It's so good to be back. There was a huge public interest in Cook's discoveries. Essayist John Hawksworth was commissioned to transcribe them. A collation of the journals sort of like a first-person novel with Cook and Banks' views fused together. However, it was a total failure. The result was an unclear and accurate story, very different from Cook's scientific annotations. What in the world is this rubbish, John? We've circumnavigated the globe catalogued thousands of plants and animals, encountered new ethnic groups, and this crap's been published. Are you at least happy to be back home? Of course I'm happy. Look at this beautiful British weather. You, Captain, you'll set sail again immediately. Oh, come on. Can I at least finish my fish and chips? And by the way, why, where, with what? We'll give you two ships the resolution and the adventure. You'll go almost to the South Pole to prove once and for all if the great continent Terra Australis Incognita really exists. Dude, I told you from my last trip that it does not exist. Why are we still looking for it? Have a good trip, Captain. The two ships, the adventure, captained by Tobias Furneaux and the resolution led by James Cook, embarked on a mission to search for the Terra Australis Incognita. Cook's ship set out to the Antarctic, carefully navigating through icy waters and searching for a passage through the ice. However, facing harsh conditions, they decided to head back north to New Zealand. From there, they revisited the French Polynesian Islands before returning to Queen Charlotte's Sound. Undeterred, the resolution ventured back to the Antarctic, where they achieved a record for reaching the farthest south a man had ever reached at that time. Throughout their journey, Cook and his crew explored and discovered various islands, including Easter Island, Tahiti, Tonga, Vanuatu, and New Caledonia, which Cook claimed for the British crown. After further stops at Norfolk Island and Tierra del Fuego, located at the tip of South America, they came across South Georgia, an unknown island until that time. The resolution continued its circumnavigation, passing through the Cape of Good Hope and St. Helena before finally returning to England. Cook successfully circumnavigated the globe and disproved the existence of Terra Australis Incognita. Once again, well done James! You endured nearly seven years of perilous voyages, explored the unknown, faced treacherous storms, endured harsh weather and survived sickness and hunger. We're very proud of you. Ah, oh, I'm finally back again. After years and years of navigating unknown seas now, I can finally rest. Hi, matey. Enjoying your weekend? I will if you go away. The discovery of an alternative route for the British to access the Pacific, bypassing the perilous Cape, holds the potential to unlock significant trade advantages. Do you know how cold it's going to be there? And by the way, who's going to do it? They sailed around the Cape of Good Hope, crossed the Indian Ocean, and reached the Pacific via Tasmania and Tahiti before approaching the Americas from the east. On his journey to Alaska, Cook unexpectedly stumbled upon Hawaii, becoming the first to discover the Hawaiian Islands in late 1778. Happy Makahiki! The exile god Lono will come here to restore peace among everyone, and be ready to welcome him. Shoot in the air, so they'll be scared and won't steal from us. It's him! No doubt runs through my thoughts. It's the god Lono! 
Wow, he is so powerful. James Cook will write in his logbook. We anchored on the seabed of black sand, among an endless number of canoes, whose occupants sang and showed their joy. The native Hawaiians warmly welcomed James Cook and his men. Western accounts claim it's because they mistook Cook for a god. Others argue Hawaiians were clever enough to realize Cook wasn't divine, but were simply showing their hospitality and curiosity towards the newcomers. Hold on a second. This bloke is not God. Is he not God? He must be. Are we sure he is God? Wait a minute. I know who you are. I, James Cook, named this archipelago after the first Lord of the English Admiralty, John Montague, 4th Earl of Sandwich. So, what's the name of these islands then? Hmm. Let me think. Something unique? Something unpredictable? Sandwich Islands! Speaking of, I'm hungry. Let's see what these people are offering us. It's January 18th. For two weeks, Cook and his men enjoyed the pleasures of the archipelago and the Hawaiian women. Beach party! What the hell is he doing? James Cook was the first European to see and write about surfing in his logbooks. A strange art that the natives practice on tapered wooden planks balanced on the waves. Thank you, my friends. We've had an absolutely smashing time. And because of that, we'll leave a little souvenir for you to remember us. What is it? Harry, please don't say anything silly. No, no, don't worry. I'm not going to say syphilis. <laughs> Time is up, my men. It's time to set sail again to explore the North Pacific. Aww. But soon after the departure, something holds back the mission. A storm knocks down the foremast of Cook's ship, the Resolution. We need to go back. Yay! This time, the natives' attitude is far from festive. Some think it's due to resource exhaustion from feeding over 100 men for two weeks leading to losses. Others say it's connected to religious beliefs. God Lono, the Makahiki is finished. A new cycle must begin again. So, you cannot return until the next Makahiki. You've given your positive power to the Hawaiian king, and you cannot return until next season. If you stay, you can only bring unspeakable misfortunes. Mate, I'm just here to repair my ship. The story of the breakage of the Formis did not convince them at all. They begin to strip the lifeboats of the crew with constant thefts to try to drive away the divine intruder. Hey, can we have some food? No. She said no. Just get it by hook or by crook. Boo! Boo! The stocks of the villages run out, just as the legend said. The god Lono has illegally returned, and abundance has turned to famine. Captain, those freaking natives stole stuff from our ship again. Enough is enough. What do we do? We'll capture their king, and he'll stay here as hostage until we'll be ready for departure. The decision to kidnap the king, Kalaniapu, was catastrophic. The god Lono now wants back the powers ceded to the king. We have to kill him to save ourselves. While Cook tried to bring Kalaniapu on board, a group of Hawaiians attacked him just when he was a few steps away from safety. Cook turned the other way to look at the ships when something hit him in the head and stabbed him in the shoulder. As he falls on his face on the shoreline, the British flee towards the ship pursued by the Hawaiians who threaten them. Four sailors were killed on the beach. The Hawaiians seize Cook's body and drag it away. The chiefs and elders treasured the body of the god Lono, reserving the highest honors for the funeral rituals. The body was disemboweled and cooked to facilitate the removal of the flesh, and the bones were carefully cleaned for preservation and treated as religious icons. 48 hours after his death, two priests involved in the cult reached the resolution at night and offered the English a piece of cooked meat, the upper part of Cook's thigh. On February 22nd, the few recovered remains of the captain were formally buried at sea by the superior seafaring crew. What remains of one of the greatest navies of all time ended up in the depths of Kealakekua Bay, while the ship's bells sound dead and the cannons explode with respect to blanks. The commander of the Discovery, Charles Clerk, assumed command of the expedition. Guys, we have to get back to England. Let's go to the nearest safe area, which is Kamchatka. Maybe the Russians can help get the ships back on track. However, like his captain, Charles Clerk will not see Britain again. In Petropavlovsk, on August 22, 1779, he died of tuberculosis. The Resolution and the Discovery are now commanded by the undercommands John Gore and James King. After taking the coasts of Japan, Macau and China, down the East Indies route, between the Sunda Strait and the Cape of Good Hope, they were finally close to Great Britain. Finally, we're almost there. 
We're here! We're here! However, an Atlantic gale diverts the shipment so far north that the ships are forced to land even at the Orkney Islands, even further north than the extreme north of Scotland. Damn weather. The resolution in the discovery finally arrived in England on the 4th of October 1780. The news of the deaths of Cook and Clerk has already reached London, which welcomes the two ships quietly without clamor in an atmosphere that is more like a funeral than joyful. But the legend of Captain Cook was already born. His logbooks and his discoveries intrigue the biography of that great explorer. The commander is on everyone's lips. Everyone knows that a true sailor is not born when he sees the light, but when he takes to the sea for the first time.